Good evening, and welcome to tonight's episode of Hexbreaker, where we're going to be taking a little bit of a diversion from the main published The Circle Undone storyline for Arkham Horror the Card Game to play The Festival, which is a fan-created scenario, which, um, which has a storyline that is pretty uh, uh, tangentially related to what we're up to in The Circle Undone. The story so far in The Circle Undone is that we are looking for witch activity in order to uh, try to explain what's been going on in Arkham City itself. Um, our investigators, Jenny Barnes and Patrice Hathaway, they've um, now that they've accidentally run into each other three times um, over the course of the past few weeks, yeah, it seems that their fates are pretty um, are pretty tied. So, this adventure is going to take place in a nearby town called Kingsport, which is a uh, a seaside coastal town um, near in Massachusetts. It's going to be uh, it's going to be early December, and it's snowing a lot, so much that the uh, train that is going to take them out to um, that's going to take to take them out to Kingsport um, it 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 stalls, and um, instead of having to wait for the snow to clear. Uh, Patrice and uh, Patrice and Jenny bravely decide to um, hoof it through the, uh, you know, hoof it through the snow to get to the town of Kingsport. Okay, so that's an introduction. I've already set up the board here. We have a really big map showing the town of Kingsport itself. This like sleepy little coastal village here with a uh, you know, snow covered, snow covered little cottages. Okay, it's got a church. Okay, that we uh, can't move into at this point. This church has some cloaked figures, which is going to be a special mechanic for this scenario. There's a side deck of cloaked figures that are going to spawn from time to time. Okay, we've also got, yep, we've also got Orange Point, which is where we start. We've got a, bear, we've got a, a cemetery, and we've got a strange high house that we uh, can't move into at this point. Okay, so what do we need to do while we're here in Kingsport? So we know that we're here because of um, because of cult because of uh, pagan activity. Uh, we've been dealing with a lot of witches and the legacy of the Salem witch trials yeah, uh, in Arkham lately. Um, so Patrice also believes, um, although she's not going to mention it to Jenny, she knows that she has some uh, familial connections to the uh, town of Kingsport. But what do we need to do while we're there? Snowy Kingsport, with its ancient veins and steeples, ridge poles and chimney pots, wharves and small bridges, willow trees and graveyards, endless labyrinths of steep, narrow, crooked streets, and dizzy church-crowned central peak that time does not touch. Ceaseless mazes of colonial houses, piled and scattered at all angles and levels like a child's disordered blocks, antiquity hovering on gray wings over winter-whitened gables and gambrel roofs, Fan lights and small paned windows, one by one, gleaming out in the cold dusk to join Orion and the archaic stars. And against the rotting wharves, the sea pounds, the secretive, immemorial sea. The snow has subsided for now, but a cold northern wind warns of a greater storm on the way, threatening to blot out the craggy peaks about the town. Okay, so we have five doom before something happens uh i uh i should also let the audience know that i have never played this scenario i have no idea what is underneath all these cards so this is going to be a journey of discovery for me and for you okay so we have five doom before something bad happens what are we we're trying to do here homecoming the printless road is very lonely and you seem to hear a distant horrible creaking as of a gibbet in the wind a story returns to a story return, turns to four kinsmen of Patrice, who had been hanged for witchcraft in 1692. Beside the road, a trail leads up to a plateau filled with jutting black stones. Beyond, a still higher summit of rock seems to float in the sky above thickening mist, and there, teetering at its edge, squats some gray, unvisited cottage, accessible as long as the weather holds. You turn your attention back to the ancient town sprawled out before you. Where will you find the home of uh, your people? So I guess we're looking for um, Patrice's ancestral home here um, because uh, she has some familial connections to the town. Okay, so what do we need to do here? We know that we can spend two clues to reveal Green Lane. Uh, sorry, four clues to reveal Green Lane. And we can spend an action to 
spend four clues to reveal the strange high house in the mist. Okay, we need to enter green lane to advance. Okay, so green lane is over here. We cannot move into there now. We gotta spend four clues in an action just to reveal it. I guess that represents going around and looking for um, this particular house that uh, Patrice feels a connection to. And I guess we can also spend four clues to uh, reveal this place. All right, so all of these uh, face down cards, these are gonna represent, um, what's it, these represent, um, think like, um, Blood on the Altar in the Dunwich Legacy cycle. Um, these are basically face down encounter cards that are attached to each of these locations and um, something's gonna happen that's gonna cause them to uh, get flipped over and drawn. Okay, so let's go over the decks before we get started. Uh, since last adventure, Jenny has opted to uh, get some more resources because she always needs more money. So we took another day, another dollar to start off with seven. Another day with another dollar is uh, deceptively strong actually. It might be three XP, and you want to, and it might be easy to compare it to say um, emergency cash, but the fact that you don't that you get the resources before the game even starts without spending any actions is really slick. And we've spent two XP since we're uh, playing under the taboo list to uh, grab elusive, which uh, I think is going to be pretty handy this game because we're uh, we got a really big map, so uh, being able to move about it is going to be pretty slick. Okay, so we'll shuffle that in. Okay, and over to Patrice. Um, so what I've done here is I've upgraded her two wards of protection to wards of protection level two. I've noticed that Jenny has been need so far this campaign has been needing a little bit of extra help when it comes to encounter cards that have high willpower tests. Patrice can just knock those out of the park, but Jenny is having trouble with uh, with dealing with say difficulty four and difficulty five willpower tests. So. Um, and also what sometimes happens is that Patrice would have a ward of protection in hand, but then draw an enemy and not be able to use her ward of protection. So this ward of protection, um, it, help, it helps in both situations. It helps her, it helps Patrice help Jenny, and it helps, it lets Patrice help Jenny in case she draws an enemy and Jenny doesn't. So we'll shuffle those in. Okay, so I think we are ready to go here. Just give everything one more shuffle. Okay, so let's, yep, I think we're ready to go. Let's draw opening hands. Okay, so let's get started. Something I noticed between takes there is that um, this, the location connections for this scenario are actually like really, really unique. Okay, and the, uh, the TTS, the tabletop simulator uh, default layout wasn't capturing the, the full weight of this, uh, you know, crazily connected scenario. Okay, so what we have going on here, we have these three, Ship Street, Water Street, and Back Street, they're all the same icon, which means there's a big mess here. So like these two connection, these two locations connect to all three of these, and then all three of these are connected to each other. This one is connected to all three of these, and this one is connected to all three of these, but only Ship Street connects to here. So I've kind of fixed it, but this is going to be kind of, it's going to be kind of unintuitive because um, we can move from Orange Point to any of these three. Uh, we can move from Circle Court to any of these three and so on. So this is, uh, this is a little wonky. So just uh, bear with me. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Let's, uh, let's finally draw some opening hands here, starting with Jenny. Okay, we are looking for, ooh, we got some assets. That is good. Ooh, we got a fingerprint kit and an enchanted blade. Oh yeah, this is great, and we've got Synergy Sour Mash, so we don't need, yeah, uh, let's keep the guts, because she is, yeah, that'll help her with um, willpower checks, so let's, we'll get a slip away instead, so we're going to run into a baddie, yeah, that's not bad, we'll be able to play Fingerprint Kit and Exhausted Blade in the first turn, I like it, okay, over to Patrice, okay, here we go, one, two, three, four, five, Okay, we've got, all right, don't get him. Okay, David Renfeld and Recall the Future are both pretty cool. Okay, um, winging it will keep because I want to dump it into the discard pile. Okay, but we don't need these two. So let's see what else we get. Oh, and we got a Holy Rosary. So we can actually afford to play all three of them, thanks to David Renfeld. Oh, what the heck, we got a case of the hovering cards here. Okay, so let's get started. We'll start with, I think, Jenny. Oh, we gotta reveal our opening location here. Orange Point. 
Here, where the road winds down the seaward slope, you, whist you listen for the merry sounds of a village at evening, but do not hear them. Then you think of the season. Perhaps these old Puritan folk might well have Christmas customs strange to you and full of silent hearthside prayer. Okay, so this place is going to have two shroud, two clues. We can spend resources to heal horror here. That's handy. We can resign. You can turn away from this ancient sea town and head back into the darkness. From here, you have a good view of the land. The road to the right tumbles down into quiet Kingsport, clutched to the edge of the sea. A path veers left up to higher summits cloaked in mist. Okay, that must be this path right here. Okay, and then, yep, and the road to the right tumbles down into quiet Kingsport. The lights of Arkham are far behind you. Okay, so let's get started. What do we need to accomplish? Okay, so we need four clues and an action to reveal this. We need four clues and an action to reveal that. Okay. This one's going to advance the agenda, so we'll probably just go straight for this one. Oh, sorry, advance the act. All right, so, oh, we got to spawn our clues manually. Let's do that. All right, so we'll start with Jenny, um, since we're going to go Enchanted Blade and Fingerprint Kit. So she is ready to go. I guess third action, she can just go for those clues. She'll be at four versus two, which is a pretty good, pretty good number. Okay, um... Yeah, it seems like a pretty good number. Yeah, she can't really... Patrice can't really help because her three actions are going to be playing three assets and then discarding those winging it's. Okay, so let's just go for it at two over. Okay, four versus two. Uh, minus two, that's a success. Okay, so we get both of those clues. All right, off to a good start. Okay, over to Patrice. We are going to... First action, play David Renfeld. Okay, use David Renfeld, put a doom on him. All right, to get a resource. Okay. Second action, play Holy Rosary. And third action, play Recall the Future. Put that over there. All right, so pretty decent opening turns here. And uh, so let's draw cards and gain resources. All right, what does Jenny get? A Derringer. All right, that'll be useful when this runs out. And then Patrice gets a new hand. New hand of five here. What do we get? Oh got our weakness one of our weaknesses and we got another recall the future to play so maybe we can just get that out of the, you know get that out and then we'll be we'll be jamming when it comes to um, skill tests we also got a ward of protection for next turn okay so a new turn two doom out of five thanks to our friend Redfeld and let's see what we get rotting remains okay so we are at four five six versus three so we'll use the recall the future to name minus four Okay. Oh, we uh, we succeed by a zillion. So not only do we discard that, but we get to shuffle one of our two cards back into the deck. Okay. Uh, over here, uh, ancient evils is bad. So let's uh, let's just get rid of it. Okay. Give holy rosary a horror. And yep, give holy rosary a horror, horror, and get rid of it. Okay. All right, so what do we do? We've got two of the four clues we need. We can go up north, or we can go into town. Hmm. I'm kind of tempted to go to Ship Street here, since that's kind of our direct connection to Green Lane. Although, if we go to the bur burying ground now, yeah, that's kind of out of the way. Hmm. Okay, so we could have Patrice. Yeah, I think we should focus on Green Lane here. Okay, so I guess we'll go to Ship Street since that's the one that's like closest. So we'll have Jenny go first, I think. Yeah, it seems fine. Okay, so she'll first action move to Ship Street. It's gonna have two clues. And I saw a Shroud 5 there, youch. Investig and investigators who fail skill tests at Ship Street added doom to the current agenda. Yikes. Then we can action spend a clue to discard a clue from Ship Street. That's strange. I wonder if this is going to be like blood on the altar where we're going to need to clear out all the clear out locations in order to look at these cards. The crash of waves from the midnight waters drowns out all noise and creates an unnervingly soothing rhythm, distracting you from your task and almost calling you down to the sea. 
Okay, so we are not going to be doing that with what we have in front of us. We're going to save that for an Intel report. Okay, we can't move into there yet. So I guess we'll go to Water Street next. What else do we need to do? Not a whole lot. All right, so we'll go to Water Street next, see what's there. Okay. Gnarled trees cluster in the front yard of an aged cottage. Despite its years, something about the place defies the darkly quiet houses around it. Someone has maintained a strange collection of large stones, oddly grouped and painted so that they resemble the idols in some obscure eastern temple. Okay, so there's two clues here, and it's Shroud 3. That's not so bad. All right. What do we got here? You can... As an action, you can test Willpower at 4 to pass by the strange stones and knock at the door. If you succeed, attach the set-aside terrible old man to this location. Huh. Smoke wafts from the stone chimney and you spy a festive glow from one of the windows. Someone appears to be home. Okay. So if we want to investigate this, if we use the fingerprint kit, we're going to be one over, which is not enough for what I'm going for here. I'd like to be like two, at least two over because drawing cloaked figures seems like a bad thing. Okay. So I guess we'll third action draw card, I think. Yeah. Oh, another enchanted blade. Okay. That might be useful later. Okay, so we've moved twice and drew an enchanted blade. All right, Patrice here. Okay, so we want to get that Recall the Future down, so let's go use Renfeld. Okay. First action, take a resource. Second action, play Recall the Future. Third action, we either join Jenny or we can head up into the burying ground. Yeah, she's not a pro at investigation yet. Okay, maybe we can go for the water, that Water Street test. That's willpower. So we'll third action head over here. Okay. All right, so that is both our turns. So we'll draw cards and gain resources. Okay. Ooh, elusive. That's going to be handy because we've got a big map here. And we're going to get a new hand. Oh, oh, there we go. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, we got stargazing. That's going to be fun. Don't need fearless yet. Oh, there's our winging it. It's back. Oh, yeah, that's right. Patrice can wing it. Okay. All right, new turn. What are we at? Three doom out of five, and we get bad stuff. Crypt chill. Ooh. Test will power at four. If we fail, choose and discard an asset. I, yikes. So it looks like the one to discard will be Renfeld. Currently we're at six versus four, so I'm not too scared about losing Renfeld, but I'll activate him before we find out what happens. Okay, so we'll test at six versus four. Um, I guess we'll use the two recall the futures to name the minus three and the minus four. Minus two, so we succeed. Okay. Good stuff. Over here, oh, we got rotting remains. All right, we've got a guts for this. So we're going to be at 5 versus 3. Um, we could boost this. Yeah, I think we'll boost it with Prophesy. Yeah, that'll put it at 6 versus 3. That feels better. Okay. Oh, we still fail by 1, but only by 1. It's not so bad. So we take a horror there. Uh, but we don't get to draw from Guts. That's too bad. Okay, so what do we do? We want to investigate here, because we've got two out of our four clues, and we want to make that skill test for the terrible old man. Okay. Huh. Why do I only have one resource and I've already used Renfeld? I should have two. That's strange. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, one from last turn. Upkeep last turn, and then one for uh, using Renfeld this turn. Okay, must have missed that. Okay, so first things first. Okay, that's a you get skill. You get plus two. Okay. So first things first, let's play the Stargazing. Just get that out of the way. Okay, so we're going to set aside four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, and then we're going to shuffle in a stars or right. 
into that stack. Okay, and put it up on top there. Okay, so that was action one for Patrice. Okay, action two, we could wing it. Wing it, use rely and recall the features and lucky. Now let's let's stay focused. Let's go for the uh, Water Street test. Okay, so we're at six versus four. Okay, we've got Lucky to back us up. All right, so we'll name the minus three and the minus four with these recall the futures. Yeah, minus one, so we succeed. So we, second action, we attach the set aside terrible old man to this location. All right, what is he like? The terrible old man. Oh, that's uh, pretty straightforward. Okay, so we'll put him over here. Okay, he's a story asset. He's an ally. Okay, so you can parlay with him. Test lower it for it. Appeal to the terrible old man to join you. If you succeed, take control of him. If you fail, immediately move to a connecting location because he scares you off. You get a um, you get plus one combat and plus one lore. Pretty good. And then when you successfully attack a cultist, deal plus one damage. There is a gentle fumbling at the rusty latch, and you see a narrow, heavy door swing inward. In the pallid glow of the single dim street lamp, you see an ancient-looking man leaning quietly on a knotted cane and smiling hideously. His eyes shine with a yellow gleam. Okay, so third action... I don't know. Lore at four might be kind of tough for Patrice right now. It might be doable for Jenny, though. Okay, so I think what we'll do with our third action is we'll wing it from the discard pile. Okay. So we're going to be testing at two versus two. Okay. There's one cultist in play. So we've got Lucky to back us up. So Lucky will cover everything that's minus two. So once again, we can do... Um, minus three and minus four with recall the feature because those are the only things we're not going to be able to cover with lucky yeah zero so if we just succeed <laughs> well, that's uh that's clever we just made it happen okay and that gets shuffled back in lucky us okay so that was third action we um we played stargazing we found the terrible old man and we grab two clues. So now we've got four clues. We can unlock this place now. So that, I think it's, that's what Jenny's going to be up to. She's going to head down there. Okay. We're going to have Patrice go there next turn because it sounds like it's an ancestral home, so we might need Patrice to get there. All right. So what can Jenny do? Maybe make this test? Right now she's at three versus four. Um, we can go to six versus four with Prophesy. Okay, that seems pretty good, actually. Yeah, that seems pretty good. We'll do that. Test at six versus four. We could probably dump the slip away to go to seven versus four. Yeah, but I think we'll, I think we'll be okay. Minus two. All right, so we succeed, and we've grabbed the terrible old man. Yeah, plus um, I think Jenny's the one who wants him. Yeah, because it's um, combat and lore. And okay, that's good. So we've got we've got him on our side. Okay. Second action. We can't really do that. Did have we gotten our Intel report yet? We have not. So we can go over here. Hmm, this one connects, so we can go to any of these, I guess. Okay, second action, head to Oh, but only Backstreet heads back here. Oh wow, I need like another location connector. This is a strangely laid out scenario. Yeah, so only that one goes there, but this one goes to all three. That is wonky. All right, so second action will head here. Okay, the the ramble of hush of hushed farmhouses and shadowy stone walls quickly turns into a long, unlighted street of village hovels with their curtains drawn. Okay, so it's got two clues. All right, so this is our second action. Force investigators who end their turn at Backstreet take a horror. Yuck. Curtains are suddenly drawn in the windows of the houses along the street and lights snuffed. You hear a strange slithering sound down a dark alley. 
I see. Okay. All right, so we can either move out of here or we can investigate and get the clues and take a horror. Okay, I think we'll take the horror. It'll be all right. So if we investigate, we're going to be at four versus two, and I'm pretty good with that. Oh, five versus two, thanks to the old man. Uh, that'll be a success, so we get both of those clues. Okay. Oh, I haven't unlocked the door yet. All right, I'll remember that for next time. Okay, we end our turn here, and we'll have the old man take a horror. All right, so that's all our actions. Let's get cards and resources. What do we got? Oh, there's our intel report. Useful for up there. And we get a new hand. Up, oh, up. Oh. Can you make it? There we go. Two, three, four, five. Ooh, I will, okay, that's nice, that's nice. I don't think we're gonna be able to afford both of them, but that's good to know. Yeah, we're not gonna be able to afford both of them though. I have a feeling we're doing okay on clues, but let's see what we draw here. All right, so we go to four doom out of five, and we'll draw encounter cards. Oh, it's just it just showed right up. Okay, that's cool. All right, so what do we do with it? Um, we want to have Patrice get down here, so I think we'll just give Patrice. She needs the resource and the card. She needs the resource anyway, less so the card. Okay, so the stars are right. She's gonna draw a card, gain a resource, and get an action. Okay. So we'll draw a card. Oh, it's even better. We've got three assets we want to play. Okay, get a resource and our action. Just go here. And while the action window is open, eh, we'll do that later. Okay. So we go there. All right, over here, what do we got? You'll write. You must either move each cultist enemy one location toward the white church. Okay, which we can't do because it's already at the White Church. Or draw cloaked figures from the set-aside deck. Oh. Okay, so we draw and I guess it spawns where we are. So they're going to start moving up towards the church. Okay, so that. You feel the call of the festival, older than man and fated to survive him, the primal rite of the solstice and of spring's promise beyond the snows. Okay. So what do we need to do here? See, it was... Couldn't cancel it because it was peril. Okay. Oh, we need Patrice to head down there, for sure. So why don't we just have Patrice go down and then see what we get. Yeah, it seems pretty good. Jenny could crush this cultist if she needs to, but let's, let's see. Okay, so we don't want to go here, because we've got the intel report for that. Okay, first action move. Oops. Okay. There are lights inside one house partway down the street. The diamond window panes are evidence that it must be kept very close. Oh, we had to spend an action. Whoops. I knew I was doing something wrong. I had to spend an action to unlock the door. Okay. Um, so we can... Yeah, I guess we have Patrice go first. Or do we let Jenny go first? And because she has a kind of an action to spare. Well, I guess they both kind of do. If Jenny attacks this thing, then she has to use all three of her actions to do that. Okay. If Patrice spends an action, moves down, and then I guess plays Peter. Yeah, that'll erase Renfeld. That seems good. We won't get to play these two though, but we can only play one asset. Okay, that'll be okay. All right, so let Patrice go first. First action, we'll unlock the door. So we'll spend four clues. Okay, four over six. So we reveal this. Okay. There are lights inside one house partway down the street. The diamond window panes are evidence that it must be kept very close to its antique state. The upper part overhangs the narrow street and nearly meets the house opposite so that you are almost in a tunnel. So there are two clues here and you can spend clues to heal damage. Okay, it's only shroud two. All right, second action, let's advance the act. The house on Green Lane. The white village had seemed very beautiful from the hill, but as you walk through the new fallen snow along labyrinthine streets, you sense an unnerving stillness. You think back to something you heard at the station in Arkham. They must have lied when they said the trolleys ran to this place since you, you see not a wire overhead. You finally stumble across a narrow street you had missed. You brush snow away from the sign. The name Green Lane stirs some familiarity in you. 
You follow the path to the seventh house on the left with an ancient peaked roof and jutting second story. You recognize the family crest above the door as your own. So this is Patrice's family crest, although some antiquated version you have not seen before. You sound the archaic iron knocker, some unnameable fear gathering in you, perhaps because of the strangeness of your heritage and the bleakness of the evening and the queerness of the silence in this aged town of curious customs. And when your knock is finally answered, you are fully afraid because you did not hear any footsteps before the door creaked open. No, oh, that's proper creepy. Okay, Act 2A, A Family Resemblance. The gowned, slippered old man who answers the door has a bland face that reassures you. He writes a quaint and ancient welcome with the stylus and wax tablet he carries and beckons you to a low candlelit room, so he's a mute. There is a cavernous fireplace and a spinning wheel at which crouches an old woman in loose wrapper and deep poke bonnet, silently spinning despite the festive season. The more you look at the old man's face, the more its very blandness disturbs you, but the flabby hands, curiously gloved, write genially, genially on the tablet, asking for your help in procuring some items from the town for the Yuletide celebrations. He writes a description of an ancient book, without markings on the cover, bound in skin. He also draws an image of your family coat of arms, but you can't quite discern his meaning. When an investigator's at a town location that has no remaining clues, you can draw the encounter card underneath that location. I see, so it's going to be kind of like blood on the altar from a uh, Dunnish legacy and then what investigator brings a grimoire to green lane advance okay so that was our second action okay so what we're going to do is we're going to overwrite renfeld in order to buy ourselves another turn okay so we're going to put a doom on him to get two resources okay and then last action we're going to overwrite renfeld with peter sylvester okay so that'll take care of that Okay, so that's her turn. Now over here, I think we need to stab these cultists because they're probably bad. All right, first action, engage them. Okay, and the old man's gonna help us with uh, attacking them. Second action, we'll use our enchanted blade and we're gonna be at three, four, five, six against two. Uh, that'll be a success and we'll do three damage. One two, three. Okay. Last action, we'll attack again, but we won't use a charge. We're going to be at three, four, five versus two. That'll be a success. Okay, so we defeat the cultist or the cloaked figures. Okay, so that's both our turns. Um, enemy phase, nothing happens. So we'll draw cards and take resources. Okay, cheap shot. And Patrice gets a new hand. Whoops. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, nice. Another shriveling. Okay, that'll that'll be handy. Okay, new turn. We go to four doom out of five. And we'll draw some counter cards. Bobbing lanterns. Attach bobbing lanterns to a cultist enemy. Limit one per enemy. Attached enemy loses aloof and gains hunter. You catch glimpses of candlelight weaving through the dark, clotted streets toward you. Okay, so this one is gonna. Okay, so this one is gonna start hunting us. Okay, and then we draw another bobbing lanthorns, which means we draw an, a clo another cloaked figures. Aw, just when we had dealt with them, so they end up over here. So I guess we know what we're doing this turn. We're gonna stab them. Okay. Yeah, we gotta. We don't have a completely full hand here. All right, so Patrice, we need, what do we need to do? We need to go to these locations, get all the clues, and um, find out the encounter cards. So we'll let Jenny go first, and we'll see how her turn goes. All right, we're going to, we and the old man are going to go take down some cloaked figures. So first action, we'll engage the cloaked figures. Second action, we'll use the enchanted blade, and we'll be at three, four, five, six versus two. That'll be a success, and we'll deal three damage. Okay. Third action, we'll attack again at five versus two. Success. So we take them out. Okay. So that's two turns spent dealing with dealing with cloaked figures, mobs of them, in fact. All right. So that's Jenny. Over here, um, I'm thinking we're going to use Drawn to the Flame on Ship Street. Yeah, that seems like a good plan. 
guess we should play the premonition at some point. Okay, so here we go. Let's see what this encounter card here is first. All right, so first action we'll move here. Okay. Oh, we got to play that shriveling though. So I'm thinking we take a resource, play shriveling. So one, two. Miss Brenfeld already. And third action, I guess we can move out here and then play the uh, premonition. So we'll know what the next. Right, yikes. And then the next one's going to be. It's going to be awful. All right. So that's both our turns. Hunter's Hunt. So this one comes down here. Okay. And now we'll do cards and resources. So now we have a full hand with 10 resources. So we're feeling pretty good right now. Patrice gets a new hand. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, we get Miss Doyle and the Black Book. Oh yeah, Black Book with um, Peter Sylvester is that's really that's really slick. But we don't have a lot of resources. That's our problem right now. Okay, we're missing David. All right, so now we're gonna advance the agenda. Okay, what happens? The Immemorial Sea. Slowly the stars have been swallowed by a crawling gray cloud, stealing the last glimmer of sanctuary from the cobbled streets of the ancient town. A new storm begins to howl in from the black seas of infinity, obscuring the high hills above Kingsport with long tendrils of swirling snows. Anyone in those heights will surely be lost. You had best find shelter soon. So we remove Strange High House from the mist location, and any accompanying assets and clues from play. Each investigator at this location describes right. Okay, so this is just off the map. Yikes. Okay. We'll never know what was up there. Okay. A legend too hideous. The low sound of a bell, like the lolling of a leviathan, rings out over the moonless and torturous network of the incredibly ancient town. Answering its call, you see a few cloaked figures emerge from darkened doorways and begin to glide their way silently through the streets, uphill toward the, sp the tall spire of a church. When you would add doom to this agenda, instead spawn cloaked figures at a town location, beginning with any unoccupied, and then when three make it to the white church advance. Oh, wow. So they're going to... Okay. So every turn we're going to get a new one. And these things are kind of tough to deal with, and they're going to march up there. So I think we're going to have to blitz this act, because because it takes three act at least three actions and some ammo to deal with them. So it's like every turn one pops up, and since they start off in empty locations, like we really can't deal with one every turn even. So we're just going to have to move fast. Yeah, we've bought some time by dealing with uh, two of them so far, and this one's not going to count because this is going to try to hunt us. So we've, we've really got to hurry up. All right, let's get the bad stuff. Nameless Menace. Move all cultist enemies one location toward the white church. Okay. So I guess they go back up. And then they're going to come back down later. And what do we got? You'll write. Oh, we're going to draw another cloaked figures. And there's nothing we can do about it. Okay, we've gotten this before. Okay, so that spawns on top of us. Okay, so I think Jenny's going to spend another turn <laughs> dealing with these cloaked figures. Yikes. Okay, meanwhile, Patrice, we're going to use, like, Drawn to the Flame and such. Okay, so if she were to attack these cloaked figures, um, maybe we have Jenny go first because if we use our enchanted blade, we're gonna be. Oh, whoops! They start off. They don't. They're aloof, so they start off over there. So if we use our enchanted blade, we're gonna be at four over, which is exactly what that is. Okay, so I guess we have Jenny go first. All right, first action engage. Second action attack. Okay, so as. So another thing we could do is we don't have to be using enchanted blade charges because the old man, we were kind of overkilling those two. The only problem is that we know that the first, the first draw we make is going to be minus four. So let's let Patrice do that. Okay. Yeah, let's let Patrice handle this. Ah, oh, but the black book. I want the black book and Miss Doyle. <sighs> the choices we have to make. Yeah, we just don't have enough actions to play everything. So we gotta pick out what's important. Do we spend our whole turn playing an asset? 
That just seems really slow when I just said we had to move fast. So we're just going to have to go assetless for a little while. Yeah. All right, time for Drawn to the Flame. Why did I think I had Drawn to the Flame? Oh, it was there last turn. <laughs> right. Silly me. Okay, so we don't want to get that. That's Jenny's job. So what does Patrice need to do? We need to check on this. Um... Oh, Jenny's supposed to have been taking some horror every turn. Oh, no. Let's say she took two. Right. I forgot about that. Okay, so sticking around is being is kind of difficult. All right. So getting these two clues is probably not going to happen. Yeah, because failing checks is bad. Um, we could pitch the turn and get the black book, or pitch the turn and get Miss Doyle. I kind of like the Miss Doyle plan. Yeah, because because the cats are really good. We can also go over here and deal with the encounter card. All right, so we have some choices here. It's like, how quickly do we want to move versus how much do we want to build up? All right, Jenny's definitely going to take out this thing and take another horror to do so. But I think we kind of need to to delay the uh, delay the agenda. All right. So what do we do? All right, we've got tons of guns. So I think we can dump the cheap shot to, in order to be four over. Yeah, we got a full hand anyway, so that sounds good. All right, first action, engage. Second action, we'll attack. We'll, play che we'll dump the cheap shot, so we're going to be three, four, five, six versus two. We cash in the minus four, okay, and deal two damage thanks to the old man. Wow, I was spending resource. I was spending charges when I really shouldn't have. Third action, we'll attack again. This time we're going to be at five versus two. Success. Okay, so we do two damage, and we've dealt with this one. End of our turn, we take another horror. Okay, we're gonna get out of here pretty soon. Okay, so Patrice. She can grab that, whatever that is. Or we can just have Jenny grab whatever it is. Yeah, she's got a lot of, yeah. Let's just have Jenny check it. Okay, so as a non-action, she gets an aged volume, gives you an extra attack power. In a hidden room, you find a strangely familiar book. Its leather cover is slightly wet to the touch and leaves you feeling uneasy. Okay, so what do we overwrite since it takes a hand slot? I think we're going to overwrite the fingerprint kit. Okay, so now she's, uh, she's really tooled up. <laughs> All right, so we've got a grimoire. This Jenny needs to come back. Okay. So what do we do with Patrice? I guess we um I guess we that means we have an excuse to go resource resource Miss Doyle. Or do we want resource resource black book? Black book is gonna give us resources all game. Yep, let's do that. Oops. Yeah, it's gonna give us resources all game because we can just put horror on Peter. Okay, good stuff. All right, so Hunter hunts, so it heads down to the hill, and now we'll draw cards and gain resources. Overpower, always nice to see. Full hand. Okay, and then new hand. Ah. Tabletop, there you go. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, we're running low here. Oh, that's nice to see the violin. Okay, that's going to be good. Speaking of resource gain. Okay, we still haven't seen the Watcher yet. So once he shows up, we're not going to have a lot of time to, d to take care of him before he attacks. All right, new turn. So we spawn a new one, and we'll, I guess he goes right here because it's empty. Okay, let's get the bad stuff. Watchers. Attach watchers to any unrevealed location or the or the location with the most clues. Each time an investigator successfully investigates this location, take a horror. When there are no clues remaining at this location, discard watchers and add a doom to the current agenda. You would feel better if there were footprints in the snow. People in the streets are a few windows without drawn curtains. Okay, so I don't really have any intention of investigating here, so I'll just 
attach it there. And we got a locked door. Well, let's say the door is locked as well. Okay. All right. So we need to get back there with a grimoire. So I guess Jenny needs to move back. Yeah. Yeah, we're not going to be able to. Okay. Um, man, that's like just pain in the butt to get down there. So maybe we use Elusive at this point just to save us two actions. I'm actually kind of a fan of that since we've got such a big hand. We need to reload our Enchanted Blade anyway. Hmm. I think let's let's use elusive to get to move faster. Okay, so we elusive over here, and we'll um, advance the agenda. Ah. Okay, we bring a grimoire to the green lane. Summoned to strange feastings, the old man is waiting for you with some agitation when you return to the house on Green Lane. You present him with the book, which he snatches hungrily from your hands. Though his face maintains its same bland expression, he is about to settle down for a thorough examination of your find when a low bell tolls somewhere far above the home on the hills of Kingsport. He writes hurriedly on the tablet, demanding that you present proof of your ancestry, as the festival is about to begin, I guess Patrice's ancestry. An investigator must take control of the bland-faced man. And if the investigators haven't found a seal ring, which we haven't, we go back to Act 2A. A seal ring? Okay, so I guess we have something else that we still need to do. All right, I don't want to overwrite the old man, so we're going to have to put this guy over here. After you successfully investigate, discover an extra clue. Okay, that's good. Two extra evasion, that's also good. But when he leaves play, we take three horror. Ugh. All right, so that was non-action. What do we need to do? We're going to have to find some proof. All right, so I know from setup that the proof is not under here. These are just books and um, other treacheries. So I think maybe we'll either explore town or we also have this graveyard we can check out. All right, so we still have three turns. We've got shriveling as well. Maybe we can take this one out. We can go like move, engage, attack. And maybe check that one out. Eh. Okay, so what we're looking for is either up at the church, but it can't be because we can't move there. Or it's either under one of these three, or it's under here. Okay. If we go and try to take out this guy, we can go take out this guy. Yeah, and then Patrice can finish it off. Hmm, it doesn't feel the best. Because the other option is we can go like one, two, three, and see what's under there. I don't want to end my turn over here because they'll come and attack. The question is, do I take this guy out? Mm. Tough choices. All right. Do we need clues? We don't. We should probably get those clues anyway, because I have a feeling we're going to need some more later. Plus, we're in, an, we're in a position where we can use the Intel report, and we got pretty full hand. So let's go do that. All right, first action, let's move. Okay. Second action, we'll spend four on an Intel report. Gain two clues. We could check this encounter card out. This could be another book. I think we've got the book we need. We can let Patrice check it out and gain a book. Oh, but she's about to use her violin, so we're fine. I don't really want to end my turn here because we're just going to take another horror. So what we'll do is play Center C Sour Mash, or we can reload the Enchanted Blade. Huh. Well, another thing we could have done is we could have moved here. Yeah, we move here. Spend six on the intel report to grab the clues off of there. Then we end, We move over here. There we go. Okay, I like this plan. 
to go Intel report yeah move Intel report move okay I like it okay that looks good that works okay all right Patrice she needs to not end her turn here because they're gonna come after her I think it might be time we can hold them down well we want to play the uh, violin it also be nice to get the tower down we could go use the black crook for a discount play the tower now that's greedy let's play the violin though and we'll use the black book and deal two damage two horror to Peter to play the violin for free okay that looks good that's a good first action do we want to engage these guys yeah that'll hold them for a turn second action move over there third action engage these guys oh they're gonna hit us for two damage no horror it'll be alright okay use the violin dump this Peter get a resource Okay, so that's both our turns. Hunters are going to hunt. So they're going to... One, two, three, or one, two. So they head towards Patrice. Okay. These guys attack for two damage, and then she takes a direct horror. Oh, I remember to heal Peter. Okay. So now we go to cards and resources. Lone Wolf, that's, always, that's pretty handy. Okay, and then we get a new hand. One, two, three, four. Okay. Pretty decent. Last chance is... Oh, but the tower. Yeah, we can't play it. All right, never mind. All right, new turn. So we spawn a new one. I guess I'll put it over here. Yeah, we can always come back there. Okay, bad stuff. Spell of the Eastern Sea. You must move each investigator in a town location to any connecting town location. Investigators in any non-town locations take a damage. Gusts of wind howl in from the Charnel Sea and up through the dizzying streets of Kingsport, carrying shards of ice that slash at your face like daggers. You stumble blindly, arms outstretched. Okay, so Jenny is not at a town location, so she... the old man is going to take a damage. But then Patrice is at a town location, so she gets to move somewhere else. If we move here, we'll engage those two, and then we can just spend our three actions shriveling everything in sight. <laughs> that actually seems good. Yeah, that seems like a good plan. And over here we got a Rotting Remains. So we're at three versus three right now. Yeah, I don't really want to boost it, because that's going to be better later. Oh, we succeed. we succeed. Very nice. Okay, so one thing good about Jenny here is we can just spend resources to heal horror. I like this plan. Alright, so we'll have Jenny go first. Since her, I think her turn is going to be pretty simple. First, we're going to spend four resources to heal all four of her horror. Second action, play Lone Wolf. Okay, so that means she can get resources back. Alright, now third action, let's move up here and see what's going on. Burying ground. Beside the road at its crest, a still higher summit rises, bleak and windswept, and you see that it is a burying ground where black gravestones stick ghoulishly through the snow like the decayed fingernails of a gigantic corpse. Oh, spooky. Okay, it it has three shroud and four clues. Okay. And what do we got here? Test combat at seven to exhume the grave. You get plus one for this test for each clue discarded. Okay, so we can discard clues. We've got three of them right now. All right. If you succeed, remember that the, the investigators have found a seal ring. If you fail, add a doom to the agenda. Okay. The snow has been scraped away from one of the graves, and there are deep gouges in the frozen soil. The lettering on its headstone has long since been worn away by the stinging salt winds, but you recognize your fam uh, Patrice's family's coat of arms. Okay, so I guess Jenny knows what she needs to do is uh, dig that dig that thing up. Okay, so that's Jenny's turn. Patrice needs to just make three shrivelings. Oh, this gets revealed. 
A precipitous lane runs upward where decaying houses overlap and tumble together in decadent squalor. All right, so Circle Court. It has four shroud and two clues, and if there's an investigator at Circle Court, other investigators cannot enter Circle Court, probably because it's so crowded. The crumbling masonry of the primordial cottages chokes the street, leaving little room for passage upward. Okay, so we'll put two clues here. Okay. All right, so Patrice just needs to make three. Oh, wait, she's not going to be able to make enough of them. Right, she can't do eight damage. She can only do six. Well, I was I thinking she was going to be able to do enough? Oh, well, maybe she'll evade one of them. Evade the one that is Hunter. Oh, okay, I like it. Try to evade, because we got the tower holding us back. Oh, that helps. Okay, so first action, we'll shrivel. We'll shrivel the non-Hunter. We're going to be at four, five, six seven against four because there are other cultists around seven against four we can't commit anything so we're just gonna have to go for it with the recall the future we'll name a minus four here because that's the only token we have a problem with uh, that's gonna be a success so we deal two damage and we take a horror because it was a special token okay second action go again do the same thing name minus four Skull, success, but we take a horror. Okay, but that one's gone. Okay. Third action, we'll evade this one. Yeah. So we're currently at two, three, four, five against two to evade. So we'll name minus four again with Recall the Future. Tablet is minus zero, so we evade this guy. This is the hunter. <laughs> okay, and then we'll use the violin, discard Ace of Rods, and get a resource. Okay, so is that both our, uh, yeah, it's both our actions. Okay, so enemies move. Okay, so we'll have them move up here, and we'll have them engage Patrice. Although, maybe we should have it move over there, because they're going to make, that's going to make them tougher to fight. Well, not too tough. Yeah, not too tough. We did have, we were, we were testing at three, uh, at seven, so that works. Okay, yeah, these are the hunters, so they are uh, gonna pursue us. All right, so we'll do cards and resources. Little Santiago, you're great, but we have no room for you. And new hand. One, two, three. We are running low. Oops. Still no watcher. Hmm. Okay. New turn. So we spawn another one. Let's put it down here so we'll funnel them up through Patrice here. Yeah. Okay. Get some bad stuff. Crypt chill. Ooh. All right. So we're going to be testing at four, five, six, seven versus four. And if we fail, we'll lose an asset. Oh, forgot to heal Peter there. Okay. Seven versus four, we'll name the minus four with Recall the Future. There it is, so we succeed. Okay, over here, locked door. Oh, so this place is locked. That makes sense, cemetery is locked. So we're just gonna have to dig it up without unlocking the door. All right, so we'll have Jenny go first. All right, Lone Wolf triggers. Okay, so if we try to dig this thing up, we are currently at three, four, five, six seven eight nine versus seven okay we can go to ten eleven versus seven with overpower okay so we are gonna yep there we go overpower we're at eleven versus seven not a tentacle so we are good to go draw a card off of overpower and we have found a seal ring okay that is good okay second action let's get this on the board to help with willpower checks. Third action will move back here to orange point. Okay, doing okay over there. Okay, Pat uh, Patrice, she needs to shrivel two things. All right, first action shrivel. We're at seven versus four because we share a location with a cultist and then we'll name minus four with recall the future. 
success, but we take a horror. Okay, so we deal two damage. Okay, second action, do it again. Okay, we are at seven versus four again. Name the minus four. Success, okay, so this time these ones are gone. All right, so we've held off some of them. Third action, we could engage this one, but we won't be able to do anything with it next turn. We won't be able to do anything with it. We can't, we're out of shriveling charges. Okay, so I think third action, let's um, play the tower, get it out of our hand. Use this, um, discard drone to the flame, get a resource. Okay, and then just play the tower for four. We won't use the black book because we don't want to. I don't want to take any more horror. Okay, so that works fine. All right, so that is all our actions. So now during the enemy phase, they move up there and they move up there. Okay. Cards and resources. Easy mark. It's handy. And we get a new sh hand of five. Whoa. <laughs> Oh, they're floating. Will they make it? I don't know, it's not looking good at this point. Will they make it onto the pile? They did, oh wow, okay. All right, so new hand of five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, there's the watcher. So we have one turn to deal with him. Yeah, so I guess we'll spend our next turn making sure we deal with the watcher, probably evading him. Yeah, it seems like a good idea. Yeah, we got ways of dealing with him. Oh, I've also got this. Get a resource. Okay, new turn. Spawn another one. Stick with the same pattern, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so maybe we can have Jenny go and intercept that one. Doesn't seem like a bad idea. So if that's the case, maybe we put it there, since Jenny's kind of heading in this direction anyway. Okay. Let's see what st kind of bad stuff we get. Obscuring fog. All right, so this is going to be a shroud six location and in an ancient evils oh no that's gonna spawn another one okay I guess we'll put it in the Patrice funnel yuck okay so I don't think we're gonna be able to hold them all off yeah we don't have, we would need another shriveling in order to hold them all off okay so we'll have Jenny go first We'll have her go intercept this one. Okay. Lone Wolf. First action move. Okay. Second action engage. Third action will attack at five versus two. It's going to deal two damage to us, but that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep, three, four, five versus two. So that was a failure. Okay. Um, that was Jenny. Now Patrice. We need to get rid of this guy. Play Premonition, so we know what we're getting into. Okay, so the tablet is going to be a minus one for each clue. So minus zero. Uh, I wish Jenny drew that. All right. So we go to evade. We need basically to hit a five on the nose. Right now we're at a five. Okay, so first action will evade the watcher from another dimension. Okay, he's done. Now what? <laughs> um, maybe we can get the six cents down. Okay, use the violin, discard lucky, get a resource. Third action, use black book, take a horror to play six cents. Yeah, it seems good. Yeah, that was all second. That was second action. Well, do we need the six cents? Hmm. We may not. Okay, 
So we discarded that to the violin, so we've still got two actions left. I guess we should head down here. But we have to bring him a grimoire. Okay. Hmm. Maybe we... It's a question, do we play Sixth Sense? Yeah, we probably should. Or we can get rid... Yeah, maybe we can get rid of... No, we're going to get hyper... rid of Hypochondria after we shuffle our deck. All right, so we totally do play Sixth Sense here. Okay. Third action. I don't think we have any hope for dealing with these guys, so I guess we'll move down here. Okay, that seems fine. All right. Enemy phase. This one attacks Jenny. Okay, and then these three move. We're going to have to intercept these. Ugh, not looking good. All right. Cards and resources. Okay. One. Okay, and then we're going to... Oh, he was supposed to heal. So we take another horror. Flip our deck over. Two, three, four, five. Oop, stargazing again. That's good. Okay, so that one's done. All right. And a resource. New turn. Spawn another one. Let's put it over here. Keep the funnel going. They're all showing up from Water Street. Doesn't seem right. Let's, at least some are going to come from Back Street. All right, now let's see what kind of bad stuff. Dissonant Voices. Oh, no. We can't play the stargazing. Oh, that's awful. And move all cultist enemies one at one location toward White Church. All any investigators engaged with cultist enemies move with them. Oh no. Okay. So they go up there, they go up there, they go up there, and then Jenny gets drug up here. Okay. Oh, that means this is gonna advance pretty soon here. Ah, but Jenny's got the book we need. There might be another book under here. Maybe we can have Patrice go get it. Yeah, but if but it's a hand slot, and then that we hmm. We'd have to lose the black book in order to do it. That seems pretty awful. Yeah, but I don't think we have time to waste. I mean she can't play the stargazing, so she doesn't have much else to do with her actions. Alright. So we'll use the violin. Discard winging it, get a resource. Okay. Let's see what's under here. Oh, it's another book. Ooh, get plus one willpower. Okay, so this can kind of dump the black book in favor of this. Okay, that's not the worst thing in the world. Okay, this is all non-action. All right, second action, we'll come back here and we'll flip the agenda now that we have brought a grimoire and we've found a seal ring. Okay, so we have we found a seal ring and now the old man nods when you present the ring engraved with your family arms. He glides to a massive carved chest in a corner and retrieves two hooded cloaks. Oh, 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 retrieves two hooded cloaks, uh-oh. One of which he dons, and the other he drapes around the old woman. Oh, okay. I think it, I was thinking it was for Patrice, who ceases her monotonous spinning. They both start for the outer door, and the old man, your book clutched to his breast, beckons to you as he draws his hood over that unmoving face. Attach a grimoire to the bland, bland, bland-faced man and reveal the white church. Okay, so I guess he takes the grimoire. Um, attached to here. Okay. And then we reveal the church. From the zenith of the town, the ghostly spire of the church claws its way into the sky. A high locked gate surrounds it. The church seems to lurch up from the snow, its doorway gaping darkly to the yard, past the churchyard where there are no houses. You can see over the hill's summit and watch the glimmer of stars on the harbor, though the town is now invisible, hulking below you in the dark. Okay, so we can go to the church now. Voiceless Guides. Out on the street, you watch the processions of cowled figures move through the alleys, carrying bobbing lanthorns. They all appear to be heading uphill toward the sound of the bell. 
The old man makes urgent gestures for you to follow the mob. It appears the time for, for festival and the fulfillment of your ancestral duty is nigh. You can't help but feel unprepared for what lies ahead and wonder what further secrets hide in the darkened streets of Kingsport. Okay, so they're... He's basically beckoning us to, like, follow them. That's weird. Okay. Well, the agenda's gonna advance, so we'll see how this goes. Okay, so we need to get up there to advance the act. All right, so we've spent one action to move. Okay. Can't play any of these. Uh, so I guess we'll just start moving up towards the uh, up towards the church here. Second action, third action. Okay. Yeah, Jenny won't get her um, lone wolf, but she can take advantage of some of these because we can commit these. Okay, Peter heals. Uh, we can also reveal that location. Nah, we, we need to help Jenny deal with these guys. All right, so first action, we'll attack them. We'll be at five versus two, and Patrice will add on a resourceful. So that'll be six versus two. All right, that's two damage, thanks to our old man. Okay, second action, we'll attack again. Dump the stargazing. Oh, we had to trigger resourceful here. Yeah, we get back a winging it, I guess. <laughs> All right, second action will contribute to stargazing since we can't play it. So we're at four over. Uh, that'll be successful. So we take out that cultist. All right. I guess third action will just start moving. Oh, other investigators cannot enter circle court. Whoops. So she was supposed to go over here. Fortunately, the uh, the help didn't really matter. Market Square. Fresh snow coats the one full flagstone pavement in the town. A once bustling borough still boasts the signs of ancient shops and sea taverns creaking in the salt breeze. Two clues, and while there are cultists here, it cannot be investigated. Okay. Fortunately, I don't think we need to do much more investigation. We just need to go straight for the church. A cyclopean evergreen has been cut in place in the center of the open square. Sap oozes darkly across the stones around its base. You feel exposed to the windows of the buildings creeping in on all sides. All right. So Jenny spent two actions to fight those things. So I guess with her third action, she's got a full hand. I guess we'll discard that. I think it's time to finally reload. Now let's move. We need to just move. We'll go to Central Hill. The town seems to retreat from the sea, houses clinging ever higher to the pocked and scab slopes. The incline grows steeper and will take all your effort to climb. Okay, so third action move. It's got two clues. Okay. Forced, when an investigator enters, enters Central Hill, lose all remaining actions. Well, as good as her last action. Nearing the town's summit, you stand in a half-paved square, swept nearly bare of snow by the wind, and lined with unwholesomely archaic houses having peaked roofs and overhanging gables. Okay, so it's going to take Patrice like two turns to get up there. Okay, that's good to know. All right, so we go to enemy phase. So this one's going to move here, and that one's going to move up there. And that's going to um, advance the agenda. Yeah. Okay, I have talked a lot, so before I advance the agenda, I'm going to get a drink. Okay, so let's advance the agenda here. Eldritch Drunken Constellations. The hushed throngs of cloaked figures oozing into the streets gather tightly about you. You are jostled by elbows that seem preternaturally soft, and pressed by chests and stomachs that seem abnormally pulpy. But you never see a face, and hear never a word. Up, up, up the eerie columns slither with you in tow. Still more of the ta slouching ta townsfolk converge about you as you flow up crazy alleys and leaning streets toward a high hill in the center of the town where perches a great white church. Okay, so we're going to spawn any remaining cloaked figures in town location beginning with those unoccupied. All right, so we have four of them. I guess we'll spawn them as far away from the church as possible. Okay. Now what do we got here? Through Serpentine Streets. You fight against the crowd as it undulates incessantly uphill. 
The few lights in the windows are snuffed out, as still more furtive figures surge dully into the streets. You look back over a shoulder, the only light in town seems to come from the windows of a fearsomely archaic cottage crouched near the black waters of the harbor. Oh, that must be where we found the uh, terrible old man. Yeah. Whoops, wrong one. Your feet slip on the slimy sheen of snow as you are twisted back around and upward. Okay, when you would add a doom to this agenda, instead move two cloaked figures one location toward the white church. And then when six are at the white church, advance. Oh, wow, so we're going to have to move real fast here. Yeah, I don't, we're going to have to move really fast, because they're going to move very quickly thanks to um, the enemy phase. All right, so this is all in the enemy phase. So now we're going to draw cards and take resources. Okay, ooh, Jenny's twin 45s. I think we're, that was about time for them. We might have to lose our age volume, but ammo is ammo. Okay, draw some cards. Do that. All right, now what do we got over here? We're going to get a new hand. Get rid of that. And what do we got? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, kind of dull here. Not a lot that we need. Okay, new turn. So we will just let these two just move up there. Okay, and then we'll draw in counter cards. Ooh, Ancient Evils. Okay, so that's going to cause two more to move up. So I guess we do like this one and this one. Okay, what do we got? Oh, Frozen in Fear. Well, she's got to spend two actions to move there. That ends her turn. So I guess we get one action to do something else. Okay. So now that I think about it, we're kind of in trouble here. Yeah, because enemy phase, he's going to move up here, and then mythos phase, he's going to move up here. So I don't think we're not going to be able to advance this act. So I guess we just... Yeah, there's really nothing we can do. So I'm guessing we just prep up for when the act advances and not, don't even try to make it into the church. Yeah, or we can just do the best we can. All right, either way, Patrice needs to spend two actions moving and one action playing stuff, but she doesn't really have anything to play. Yeah, we don't want to take all that horror when he leaves play. Okay. We don't want to overwrite Peter. Okay, so I guess we'll use the violin to um, discard a six cents, get a resource. Oh, we can't even afford to get rid of hypochondria and still move into, still move up there. Hmm. So maybe this is the turn we actually. Um, like just hold off and let the agenda advance and then react to that. Maybe something like we get rid of our hypochondria. Yeah, it's like a prep up for whatever comes to us. Yeah, let's just do that. Okay, so two actions to do that. Third action, we can't move, fight, or evade. Oh, we don't have any shriveling. All right, I got an idea. No, that won't work. Hmm. So we get rid of that. Third action, take a resource. Okay. Jenny. She needs a new weapon. Yeah, I guess we can just spend our actions getting weapons, getting armed up. I don't know if she needs to actually go up there now. So let's just hang out, arm up a bit. Okay, in that case, first action, play easy mark. Up, oh, play another easy mark. Oof. Ouch. Yeah, we're not going to be making that. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. I think I sense a mental trauma in my future. 
All right, third action. Let's reload. Let's do the Darren. Let's do a Derringer. Oh, and Lone Wolf gets triggered. Yeah, I guess was bound to come up eventually. Yikes. Yeah, she's gonna get a mental trauma. We're not gonna be able to find we're not gonna be able to spend any time searching for Izzy, I don't think. Okay, so that's all our actions. Go to enemy phase. So they move there. They move there. And we'll just have that move there. Okay. Oh wait. Oh, we don't move all of them. We're going to just move two of them. Oh, that changes all the math. Because we can move one there and one there. Ah, but we needed to get Patrice to move up there. All right, let's 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 back this up a bit. Okay, instead of spending time on hypochondria, we spend two actions moving. Okay. We can actually, we actually can make this. All right, now we'll um, test against. We get need. We remember to test against frozen fear. So we're at four, five, six versus three. Name minus four. Okay, so we get rid of that. Okay, that might have seemed like a retcon, but oh wow, I saw a route actually out of this. I thought we were hosed. Okay. So cars and resources. Okay, well connected. Not bad. And we get a new hand. Two, three, four, five. Oh, this looks pretty good. Yeah. For dealing with whatever comes at us. Oh, and Peter heals. I was forgetting all sorts of things. Okay. All right, new turn. Two of them move closer. One, two. Okay, so now we need to just head in and, yeah, head into the church. Okay. What did Jenny do with her actions? She just went. Oh yeah, she played the Derringer. I think I was. I was hoping I didn't. Uh... Did I short myself in action? I think I did because I played the easy marks. Played the Derringer. What else I did? Okay, so we'll say Jenny moved there with her <laughs> with her last action that I totally forgot about. Yeah, played easy marks, played Derringer. That's two actions. Okay, so now we can actually make this work. <laughs> All right, now we'll take the bad stuff. Another person in fear. Oh my god. And we've got distant voices. Okay. No assets or events. Okay, so we'll start with Patrice. Two actions, move here. Okay, now we'll advance the agenda. Okay, beneath the earth, as the throngs pour through the dark aperture into the church, the old man, your relation, pulls at your sleeve, though you find yourself determined by some unnameable dread to be the last. You cannot shake the image of the cloaked horde who left no footprints behind them in the snow. Investigators may spend X clues to remove X number of cultist enemies from the white church. We have no clues. Great. <laughs> so that's not happening. You pause to let your eyes adjust to the interior of the church, lit only by a dull glow, as the last of the throng is vanishing up the aisle between the high, white pews. They squirm noiselessly down the trapdoor of the vaults, which yawns loathsomely open just before the pulpit. The doors of the church shut behind you as the old man pulls you dumbly down the foot-worn steps and into the dank, suffocating crypt. Place a set-aside Stygian Grotto into play and move all investigators and enemies from White Church to Stygian Grotto. And then we advance the agenda to 4A. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, Stygian Grotto. Okay, so that is... Yep, that's a one-way connection to there. Makes sense. Okay. And then, gah, then everything gets moved to Stygian Grotto. So let's just make a, do all that. Blah. <laughs> OK. 
Okay, so all these guys are in Stygian Grotto. All investigators and enemies from the White Church into Stygian Grotto. Okay. Okay. From down below the illimitable staircase, you hear the lapping of sunless waters. Okay, it's got four clues. Okay. Oops. And forced, when it's revealed, place the set aside amorphous flute player, hybrid winged thing, and worm throng into play. What the heck? We got some baddies, so we get. What do we got? A hybrid winged thing, an amorphous flute player, I see these are both aloof, and a worm throng, that's also aloof, so I guess we don't spawn that. So we got, got a whole crowd down here. Yikes. You are beneath Kingsport in an unhallowed Erebus of Titan toadstools, leprous fire, and slimy water. You hear the feeble drone of a flute as misshapen creatures flop into view. Okay. So we advance to 4A, so we skip that. The Primal Rite. After aeons of descent, down past impious catacombs of nameless menace, you emerge upon the boundless vista of an inner world. A vast fungus shore is lit by a belching column of sick greenish flame and washed by a wide oily river that flows from the abysses frightful and unsuspected to join the blackest gulfs of immemorial ocean. Okay, so as an action we can throw yourself we can throw ourselves into the underground river to go to resolution one. Let's see, uh, I notice it doesn't say resign, we just do it. Okay, forced. When an investigator successfully attacks an enemy, all enemies lose aloof. And then when all investigators are defeated, we advance. Oh my gosh. Okay. Act four. The rite of fire and evergreen. It is finally time for the Yule rite, older than man and fated to survive him. The primal rite of the solstice and of spring's promise beyond the snows. While a piper drones, you watch as the cloaked throngs adore the sick pillar of flame. The old man steps forward, lifting above his head the abhorrent book which you bore to him. Okay, when an investigator first deals damage to an enemy in the Stygian Grotto, flip the blind face man over. Okay, so everything basically attacks us after we uh, deal damage. Objective. The investigators may spend four clues to join in the ancestral ritual. Advance to Act 4B. Family. Or, if all enemies of the Stygian Grotto are defeated, advance to 4B. Festival. Okay. Okay, so this is all after Patrice's first action. Okay, it looks like, yeah, we're never getting out to search for Izzy. All right, so what do we do now? We've got a lot of stuff in play here. Okay. We've got a hybrid wing thing. Okay, which has five hit points. We've got an amorphous flute player, which is, okay, so it's gonna be like a nasty whippoorwill. And we've got a worm throng, which is massive. Okay, at the beginning of the enemy phase, it's going to eat all the cultists and get extra health. Okay, that makes sense. But as soon as we attack one of these things, they all go nuts on us. Okay, fortunately, this triggers at the beginning of the enemy phase, so we don't have to worry about these cloaked figures here. Okay, that's good. All right, what do we do? Okay, so Patrice had to spend two actions to get there. Hmm. Well, we gotta do something with all this. What kind of test do we want to make? We oh, we need a shriveling is what we need. Hmm. Yeah, what we need is a shriveling. I think we're gonna have to go the fight route. I mean, we could investigate and then just participate in the ritual. Hmm. But if we go the fight route, we're going to lose all this stuff. But I think that may be what we have to do. Okay, well, we can't evade anything because everything's aloof. We can't triple. I guess we can investigate with our last action. Yeah, he'll give us two clues if we do. 
Um, we can use Fearless to try to remove a clue, remove a horror from ourselves. It's not the worst thing in the world. Yeah, we only have one action left. Because this frozen fear again. All right. Okay, here we go. So we'll investigate with the sixth sense. We're going to be at four, five, six versus one. Okay, so make that seven. All right, maybe there's a different way to do this. Um, if we engage with our last action, maybe Jenny can start blasting something. Okay, that seems like a bad idea. She can blast that. Oh god, then we've got all this to deal with. She needs two attacks to blast that. That's the problem. Although if she gets, if she gets an extra action, on the, because of the Derringer, then we might be able to go. What's it? Attack, attack, evade that. And not sure what to do with that. <laughs> hmm. Okay, we can't play assets or events. Ooh, we can slip away that. Okay, I like. Okay, I see. With we've got a plan going. We can go like attack, attack. Get rid of that because that thing is gonna. That's the nastiest one. Okay. Against cultists, no, and these are not cultists. Attack, attack, evade, slip away. Okay, that seems pretty cool. But when we do that, then this guy's gonna flip too. Yeah, so that's a lot to deal with all at once. All right, so let's do. Let's just set up this turn, or just chill this turn, and then yeah, and then we'll be more ready next turn. Okay, so back to the original plan. So if we engage something, might be good to engage it now. I mean, we'll take a horror on Peter. Okay, that actually seems good. That'll save us an action next turn. Okay, when we do decide it's time. Yeah. Okay, so we'll engage this thing as Patrice. All right. End of our turn. We'll test against Frozen in Fear. We are at four, five, six. Oh, we need to do this. Um, dump Peter to gain... We'll dump this Guts to gain a resource. I don't want to be drawing cards right now. Or we can give Jenny a card. Nah, she's got too many. Okay. We don't want to be drawing cards, because what if I draw my Shriveling, and then I have to immediately discard it? That would be awful. Alright, so we'll pitch this Peter in, and um, be at four, five, six, seven against three. Success. Okay, so that's gone. Oh, I meant to use the Fearless. Yeah, I'll use the Fearless instead, and I'll just use both, <laughs> so we heal a horror. Okay. That's that's her turn. Jenny. Okay, we're not going to attack this turn. We're going to we're going we're setting up to attack next turn. We can't play any um, assets or events. I don't really want to draw cards. So there's really not much to do but investigate, I guess. Okay, so if we investigate, we're at what? Three versus one. Yep, no assets, no events. We could draw, and yeah, we've already got a full hand. Okay, so investigate at three versus one. Um, success? Oh, accidentally picked that up. I don't even know where that up oh, there it is. That's where that came from. Second action, three versus one. Success. Okay. Um, third action, three versus one. Uh, minus two. Oh, so we fail and try to encounter card. Oh my gosh. Uh, we'll s crap. Oh, three versus one. Never mind. That's a minus two. Well, we succeed at that. Okay. Must be getting a little sleepy here. Okay. So we've got three of the four clues in case we want to join in on the ritual. Or in case we need the clues for anything else. Okay, that ends Jenny all our turns. This thing attacks, attacks Peter for a horror. Okay. All right. And then we'll draw cards to gain resources. So that's going to go away. 
Helen Mirror, nice. And then we get a new t hand here. Okay, nice. Oh, this is pretty good. We're gonna be able to do a lot of skill checks with this, but we need our shriveling. <sighs> it's in there somewhere, right? Yeah, it's gotta be, it's in there somewhere. Okay. 18 cards. Yeah, okay. New turn. Oh yeah, um, whoops, enemy phase stuff happens. Um, this guy eats all these guys. So he eats one, two, three, four, five cultists. Okay. So he removes them all and gets five health. Right, and then these three move closer and they take the location connector with them. <laughs> okay. So he gains five health. We'll use resources to represent that. Three, four, five. All right, he eats them all. The cloaked figures wriggle and writhe, robes shredding or slipping into the ground in dark puddles, revealing not human bodies, but corpse fat and nightmares. Oh, yuck. This is real Resident Evil stuff we got going on here. Yikes. Okay. Okay, so that's all that. These two are still aloof. Okay, and this guy is engaged. All right, so this is gonna end the turn. New turn. Doom? Yeah. And now we'll get some bad stuff. Let's give that some more shuffles. Whoops. Okay. Ancient Evils, another Doom. And you must move each investigator in a town location to any connecting town location. Investigators in non-town locations take a damage. Okay, so I guess we're probably not at a town location. Didn't think so, so we take a damage. So she takes a damage and a horror. Yuck. Okay. So, do we kick things off? Or do we wait another turn? Uh, I really need that shriveling. But yeah, I think we gotta get rolling here. Yeah, we don't have a lot of choices. Yeah, we'll kick things off. We'll have Petrice focus on evading. And Jenny will focus on shooting. Okay. Let's go let's uh, play this premonition to guide our destiny. Ooh, Elder Sign. Alright. So who do we want to go first? Do we I mean, Patrice's would actually mean something. We can have her like do an attack with her first action, because we know she'd we can like know that she'd succeed. Because right now she's at one two. She's at two to attack. This would be plus one, so that'd be her at three. This guy's giving minus two, so she would hit it on the nose. Okay, I kind of like this idea. Um, would resourceful help? That would give us a last chance. Lucky, look what I found. Live and learn. Mm, not particularly. It'll help around the evasion checks, though. And then we'll get to shuffle stuff in. That would make our shriveling harder to find. All right. It seems like a decent plan. It also means we can use the violin to dump something we don't need. I don't think we need resourceful. To give ourselves a resource or Jenny a card. Let's give Jenny a card, I think. Although we might draw into our shriveling. Yeah, let's see if we draw into our shriveling. We don't draw into our shriveling, okay. All right, first action. Let's do what we let's do the thing where we um, attack that and set everything off. Okay, here we go. Okay, so if we punch it, we're at one two, one two. Minus two is zero. Plus one from the other side makes a one. Okay, so here we go. We punch this guy. Do a damage. We successfully attack, which means all sorts of things happen here. Everybody roars at us. Okay, all enemies lose aloof. 
This guy's massive, so he sticks around. Okay, this guy engages whoever has the lowest agility, which is, he's got three, she's got five right now. So it'll engage Jenny. And then this guy is going to, where'd it go? He flips over. So what do we get? Oh gosh. Well, the aged volume is, okay, so I guess this engages Patrice as well. Okay, well, what do we got here? He's got an old tome. While the aged volume is attached to the old man, he gains plus one fight. Any other grimoire attached to him gives us minus one fight. Okay, so we, so I guess he, he doesn't have much power. That's funky. If we gave him this one, he would have uh, gotten more powerful. Okay, I had no idea. All right, so he's three to fight. A sudden motion dislodges something from the old man's hood. A devilish waxen mask falls from what should have been his face. He grabs at you with flabby, strangely coiled hands. He's worth a victory point. That's good. All right, so this was all in Patrice's first action. Okay, now we're going to focus on evasion. What's our evasion right now? We're at three. Okay. We need to evade this thing because it's massive. And probably should evade this thing as well. Yeah, because he's doing a lot. And Okay. So second action will evade. Use an unexpected courage on it. So if we do that, we're at five versus two. We'll name minus four with recall the future. Success. So we evade this guy. So he won't hit us both for three damage. And then last action, we'll evade this guy. And we'll do the same thing. We'll do five versus two, name minus four. Success. He's evaded. Okay. Oh, he's got the tome with him. Although it doesn't matter that much. Ah. Okay. So that was Patrice's turn. Jenny needs to finish this guy off. All right, so first thing she'll do is take a shot. She is at three, four, five, six, seven. Down to five, thanks to the, the flute playing. So five versus one. That's pretty much as good as it gets. Minus three, so that's a success. Okay, minus three is a success. Five versus one, minus three is two versus one. That succeeds by one, which is what we need to uh, take him out. Okay, so he goes to the victory display. Okay, that was action one. All right, now we're going to shoot some things. Probably this one, or do I want to... I think I'm going to slip away this one because he's not elite. Yeah. These two are elite. Okay, so if I slip away this one... Then he'll be locked for a turn. Okay, let's do that. Second action. Spend two, play slip away on this guy. So we are at, we've got one plus one to our um, lore. So we are at seven versus three to, um, to slip away this thing. It's pretty, we want to succeed by two though. All right, I think we're going to keep the terrible old man. So I think we can dump the... Well, we're going to save that for when we want to shoot and do really well. So I think we can drop Lola Santiago here. Okay. So we are at 7, 8, 9 versus 3. 9 minus 4 is 5, which still succeeds by 2. Okay. Wow, we got like the worst we could uh, without failing. So he is locked for a turn. Okay, third action. We're going to shoot something. Probably this guy because he's easier to get rid of. Yeah. He's only a three to fight. He's a four. He's a four. All right. Third action. Shoot. We'll add four question marks. Oh, Peter was supposed to heal. Okay, we'll add four question marks. So we're going to be at three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, it's pretty good. Eleven minus zero, so we deal two damage and get another action. 
Okay, since we're running low on bullets, maybe now I should actually reload. Hmm, with my bonus action. Or it could be twin 45's time. Just drop it out there. I'll lose this, but I'll have lots of bullets. Yeah, because the problem we're going to run into is like, I'm going to be, if I shoot one more time, I'll be out of bullets next turn. So I think I'll just use the, I'll just reload the Derringer. Yeah, and then I can try to get another action off of it. All right, last action, I'll reload the Derringer. Okay. Okay. Seems good. All right, enemy phase. Um, okay, so they're all locked. And they're all um, evaded. They're all exhausted. So these guys are going to move in. Okay. They move in like at the end of the enemy phase, I imagine, because they're unengaged. Yeah. And then I guess they engage all of us, because this happens at the beginning of the enemy phase. Is it all enemies lose aloof? All enemies lose aloof. Okay, so these three engage all of us. Uh, let's say they engage Patrice. Okay. Yes, yeah, so they're gonna like. It's gonna cause Patrice to provoke. So let's put them all on Jenny because Jenny is not gonna take any actions that provoke AOs. Um, Jenny is just gonna shoot next turn, I think. Shoot and evade at least. All right. The, now we go to upkeep. So we draw, gain resources, and yeah, dump that. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and then he stays down. He's massive. He refreshes, and we'll have him engage somebody. Probably, yeah, we'll just do Jenny. Keep it easy. Okay. New turn. Oh, she gets a resource. Okay, new turn. Go to Doom 3. Okay, this is... I'm uh, getting nervous here, folks. What's underneath? The nethermost caverns. If the pillar of flame is not in play, the flaming column looms over you, spouting volcanically from depths profound and inconceivable. It casts no shadows as healthy flames should and coats the nitrous stone above with a nasty venomous vertigris. Place a set aside pillar of flame into play at the Stygian Grotto and then return to Agenda 4A. Okay, we haven't been defeated, so we don't do that. All right, so we have this thing. What is this? It is another massive enemy. Oh my gosh. All right, when it's defeated, all right, it only has two hit points, that's good. And if an investigator in the Stygian Grotto controls the terrible old man, the terrible old man opens several peculiar bottles and blue vapor springs forth, extinguishing the greenish flame, placed in the victory display. Oh, nice. In all its seething combustion, no warmth lies, but only the clamminess of death and corruption. All right, so the old man comes through and deals with that thing for us. Nice. Thanks, pal. Okay, so now we draw encounter cards. This is where things get scary. Rotting remains, okay. So let's test that. We are at four, five, six versus three. Uh, we'll name minus four for that. Although actually we don't care. Because worst comes to worst, Peter takes some horror for us. Uh, minus zero, so that's a success. Okay, what do we got over here? Attach bobbing lanthorns to a cultist enemy. It loses loot and gains hunter. Okay, but it's going to get eaten before... Um, before it gets a turn, so I don't think that even matters. Okay. Yeah, because that guy's going to eat it. All right. Now it's our turn. We need to evade this guy. Kill this guy. Yep, that's all we need to do. I think it's going to be pretty much all on Jenny to do it. Yeah. 
Uh, we can have Patrice do the evasion up here. Okay, and then we can just have Jenny just make take three shots. Uh, she won't be able to play the twin 45s with a fourth action, though, because of all these things. So we'll just have to hope for the best here. If she gets a fourth action, I guess she'll use it to evade. All right. So what do we do with Patrice? I think we just power draw and look for the, uh, you know, I guess we keep searching for the um, shriveling. Uh, okay, that will. Okay, so let's start with Patrice. We're not going to need this winging it, so we'll we'll dump it and draw a card. Miss Doyle. That'll be nice to have. Okay, so I think we're going to go first action evade, second action play Miss Doyle, third action do something. Okay, so first action we'll evade this guy. He's at a two. We are at a three to evade. Okay, so let's make it bigger. We'll save that. We'll pitch in the Ward of Protection. So we're at four versus two. Okay. So we've got the skulls covered, the tablets covered. Okay, so we'll name um, Cultist and we'll do minus three. Okay, so success. All right, we've evaded that guy with our first action. All right, second action, let's play Miss Doyle. Okay, and we will grab our cats. Finally, we get our cat army. It's going to show up to help us out. Okay, so one of our cats is going to, one of our cats is randomly going to come into play. The other two are going to get shuffled into the deck. All right. Okay. Zeal provides fighting. Oh, that's useful. The other two are going to go into the deck. Okay, that was our second action. Okay, so we can exhaust or discard her. If you discard Zeal, you can fight and have it auto succeed, but then we can get Hope or Augur into play from a discard pile. Okay, so in order, so the way the cats work is if you want to cycle them, you know, keep them keep the chain going, you need them in the discard pile. Patrice is pretty good at this, but it means we don't want auto successes just yet. All right, so third action. I think what we're going to do is we're going to use Zeal to have it scratch something. Probably this guy, because he's a three to fight, and we'd like to get rid of him. Um, he has an even number of hit points, though, so Jenny's just going to take him out no matter. Yeah, he's just Jenny's going to take him out, so what's something with an odd number of hit points? Probably this guy. Yeah, he's going to be next. Okay, so he's a four to fight. We're at a five. Okay, we're at a five. Do we get a boost from Jenny? Probably not. Let's just hope for the best here. So we're one over. We'll name Skulls and Cultists with these two. Actually, we've got Lucky. So if we get the Skull of the Cultist, Lucky covers us. If we get a minus three, Lucky covers us. So Lucky doesn't cover the minus four by itself. So we'll name minus four and Skull. Minus two. So we're down by one. Play Lucky. And we scratch um, this little guy right, this guy right here. Okay. That was her third action. I could have just played Live and Learn. All right. Over here. Jenny's going to start shooting. Okay. First shot on this guy. We need to take him down. So we're at three. Four, five, six, seven. Seven against three. That seems pretty good. Let's go eight against three just to push it over. Oh, oh well. It was going to happen sometime. Okay, fortunately, we have two more shots to take him down. Second action, shoot again. So we are at seven versus three. Success by a zillion, so we get an extra action. So we still have two actions left, and we do two damage. 
third action, shoot again. This time we really want this one to connect. So do we put in the unexpected courage? I think we do. We need this one to connect. Because right now we're at three, four, five, six, seven versus three. We just need to succeed by one. Okay, so we'll be okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, so he's done. He goes in the victory display, I believe. Yeah. All right, so we've, we're starting to get this under control. So the problem is with these guys, can't really do much but fight. He punches cultists, but they're going to get eaten. So I guess we can punch this guy. Yeah, I don't want to burn the Sour Mash yet because I need it for skill tests. I would love to play my Twin 45s, but these things would, it would provoke from all these things. Okay, so I think we just... We've already evaded. Not sure what happens to this thing at this point. I'll just leave it over there. I guess we can punch. If we do that, we're at five versus four. Uh, if we get a tablet, we'd be in trouble though. So I think we'll just pass. Yeah, I think I'll just pass. Okay. Yeah. All right. Enemy phase. Begin of the enemy phase. These three get eaten. Okay, they go to the pile. This guy gains three more health. Okay. Then they refresh. Well, actually, they're going to refresh during upkeep. Okay. So no attacks. They refresh during upkeep. So we draw a card, resources, and then we get a new hand for Patrice. Oh, it's starting to run low. Where did the Watcher go? Is it in here? Or is it in that? Yep, it's in the bottom of the deck again. But we've got Augur. That's good. It means we can auto-succeed at this and then get Augur, which investigates. Totally not what we need. Okay, so get a resource from that. New turn. One doom. So we're kind of fine at this point because we've got the flame covered. As long as this old man stays alive, we've got the flame covered. All right, so let's do cart let's do new encounter cards. Okay. Um this is going to Okay, attach bomb. All right. If there are none, just Draw a cloaked figures. Draw a cloaked figure from the set aside deck. Okay, so a cloaked figure shows up and engages somebody. Yeah. Hmm. It's going to get eaten, so we just have to play it on someone who's just not going to do things that provoke. Alright, well, we need Jenny to. Uh, Oh, this thing engages with somebody. We'll have it engage with, what's it, lowest? So they're equal right now, so we'll just have it engage with Patrice. This way Jenny can put down her um, twin 45s and then keep shooting. This, however, is nasty, so we are going to cancel that. Okay, put a horror on Peter. Okay. So what we need is Jenny needs to get down her tw twin 45s and start shooting, I think. Um, we could also get down the Enchanted Blade and Stab, because that'll maintain this. Either way seems pretty good. Yeah, and then Patrice can focus on evading here, I think. Yeah, ironically, she's like kind of okay at it. Yeah. Okay, so we got to evade this guy, for sure like to well, see if Jenny can take down this guy. All right, so if we go first action, well, Jenny go first, first action, play Enchanted Blade. Okay. Second action, attack with the Enchanted Blade. 
So we're at 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 versus 4. Pretty good. We'll add on an icon there. Yeah, 7 versus 4. Now we're at 8 versus 4. Success. So we deal 2 damage. Oops, this guy. All right. Third action, stab again. Seven versus four. And we'll use prophecy to go to eight versus four. Success, so he is done. Okay. Yeah. All right, that was her turn. Patrice. Patrice needs to evade this thing. And that's about it. Okay, so we can... Sorry, we'll start by evading this guy. We are at 3 versus 2 to evade. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to pitch in the Defiance. So we go to 4 versus 2. We'll name... Yeah, and so we'll name the um, cultists for that. So we've covered the skulls, we've got the cultists, we've got tablets covered. We just, we don't have minus threes and minus fours. Okay, so we'll name minus three and minus four with these two, with Recall the Future. Success. Okay, so he is evaded. All right. That was first action. All right, so I think what I'll do here is I'll dump this. for a resource. Mm. Yeah, we don't need it for anything else, so I guess we'll just dump it for a resource. I guess second action, we can just evade this guy, because we can't do anything really, we really can't do anything that provokes. Yeah. We can also use zeal here. Yeah, we'll evade, we'll see if we can evade this guy. All right, we don't want any bad things to happen when we fail to evade, so we'll name minus three. Yeah, we'll name minus three for this one. We're currently, what, one over? So we'll do minus three and skull. Sure. Oh, big success. Okay, so this guy's evaded. And then we shuffle everything but one card in. All right, do we have any weaknesses in here? We do not, so I guess we'll leave one of the cats out. Meh. We'll leave a winging it behind. And we'll shuffle everything else back in. So our... You may, oh. Well, too late now. I just realized this makes it much harder to find our uh, shriveling. <laughs> okay, so that was second action. Third action, I think we'll do a scratch. Yeah, use zeal, and we're gonna scratch this guy. So we're at five to scratch. We don't want anything bad happening, so we'll name the skull and minus twos. Okay, so we successfully scratch. Okay. Well, actually, we don't really do that. We don't put a damage on him. We just remove one of his bonus hit points, because he's, he's going to get back. This guy's going to have a ton of health. Alright, so that is all our actions. Alright, so beginning of the enemy phase, this guy gets eaten. Okay, and he gets a health back. Okay, then no attacks, and then he refreshes. Okay, so we might have things under control here. All right, cards and resources, okay, and we get a new hand, okay, there's the Watcher, okay, new turn, Doom 2, and now we'll get some bad stuff, you'll write, you must either move each cult enemy one location toward the white church or draw cloaked figures from the set aside deck. Okay, so this thing, this guy's gonna keep gaining health because we're gonna keep drawing cloaked figures. 
Okay, and I guess we'll have it engage Patrice. Yeah, because we don't want Jenny getting engaged. <laughs> we don't want her getting engaged. All right, we'll do Crypt Chill. Um, I guess we'll probably just fail it because... Yeah, I guess we can just fail it because we just lose our Lone Wolf. Okay, so we just fail it and we lose our Lone Wolf because we're not going to need it anymore. All right, so what do we do here? Don't need Augur. I think we're going to go... We'll have Patrice go first and evade this guy. Get this guy evaded, so that way Jenny can just go stab, twin 45s, start shooting. Okay, we'll do that. Um, another possibility is we can get that we could get the well connected down. That's actually pretty good because then we'll be teched up. Oh, we could also get the or we get the hollowed mirror down to do some healing. Either way, those twin 45s are coming down <laughs> this turn. All right, so we'll Patrice go first, and we'll start with a um, we'll start with a premonition to guide our destiny here. It is a minus four. All right. So if we were to evade this guy and we had a minus four, we would need to be at six. Right now we're at three with this. Uh, last chance would put us at six. Okay, that seems good. Okay, use the last chance. Go to evade that guy, cash in the minus, it goes six to two, cash in the minus four. Whoops, doesn't go there, goes here. He's evaded. Okay. Second action. I guess we evade that guy. All right. Three versus two. Three, four versus two. We'll do five versus two. Name, um, name Skull. Five versus two, and then we'll name um, minus four with work all the future. Uh, <laughs> another another elder sign, so this guy's evaded. Okay, what time to be getting elder signs? Okay, well I guess we'll leave the winging it and reshuffle everything else back in. Okay. Um, third action. I guess we'll do a scratch. Yeah. Alright, so what are we at with a scratch? We're at five versus four to scratch. Okay. We'll name skulls and skulls and cultists. Okay, minus one. We successfully scratch, so we remove one of his hit points. Alright, Peter heals. Alright, over to Jenny. Okay, so Jenny's gonna stab. Then I think get down the twin forty fives and get down well connected, yeah. Because Hell Mirror is gonna provoke every time I try to use it. Alright, first action stab, the biggie. So he's gonna be three, four, five, six, seven versus four. Okay, that'll be fine. Success, so we take two health off of him. One, two. Alright. So we're going to, have to say goodbye to the uh, the book that's boosting our hit points. I uh, sorry, our combat because we're playing twin forty fives. And if we do that, it means maybe getting the well connected down isn't going to do much good. <laughs> All right. So I think what we'll do is second action, get down the hallowed mirror. Okay. Put this into play. These two into the deck. Then discard these as we burn everything all our money on twin 45s for 10 bullets because we need bullets 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 pile of bullets here okay we are ready to go yeah look at all those bullets so many bullets they don't even fit on the card okay so those are three actions that was all our actions all right we have no attacks um, beginning of the enemy phase this guy um, gets eaten Okay, so he gets another health. We're really slogging through this guy here. And then he's going to refresh. Okay. Cards and resources. 
easy mark. And we get a new hand. Of, we get four here. Okay, we got a word of protection. That'll be nice. Okay, new turn. Three doom. Advance. Okay, so basically the agenda doesn't really matter um, because we've dealt with the pillar of flame like permanently. He's in the victory display. If he were to come out of the victory display, the old man puts him back in the victory display. So we are set. We are just down. It's just down to fighting this guy and encounter cards. So we don't really care about ancient evils. Okay. And Nameless Menace. Move all cultists into one location toward the church. If there are none, add a gym to the current agenda. So I guess we don't care about that either. Okay. All right, so what do we do now? I think we just have Jenny start blasting. Yeah. He does he retaliate? He does not. Okay, so we'll just have Jenny blast. Okay, first action blast. We are current, so we are now at one, two, three, four, five, six versus four. So we're gonna need a little bit of blasty help. Okay, let's pitch in a ward of protection. So we're gonna be three over, which is probably okay. Minus one, so that's enough to do to take off two of his health. Okay, second action blast again. One, two, three, four, five, six versus four. Let's add an 11 learn to go to seven versus four. Uh, minus three, which is enough. Okay, so we take off two of his health. Okay, this thing has a lot of health. All right, third action, blast again. Yeah. Okay, so now we're uh, one, two, three, four, five, six versus four. Let's use the last chance. Yeah, six, so we'll go nine versus four. Success, so we take off two more of its health. Okay, so he's down to five now. Okay, so this is, we're doing okay. That's Jenny. All right, so Patrice needs, to, her job is to evade this guy. All right, so right now we're at three to evade. Use this, oh, whoops. Use this, discard this, get a card that might help us. Nope, okay. Three to evade. Jenny can boost it. That'll put us at four versus two. So now we've got everything covered but threes and fours. So we'll name three, minus three and minus four here. So now we're really starting to see the brilliance of Recall the Future. Without even um, exhausting them, I'm already covering various, um, I'm covering some of the tougher tokens. Yes, this, these cards are really good. Um, I didn't have to spend anything. Uh, but I had those, um, I had the minus threes and minus fours covered. Okay, so that was first action we evaded. Um, I guess second action we'll scratch. Now let's draw, because if we top deck our shriveling, we can, we can play it. Okay, nope. Third action we'll scratch, I think. So now we're at five versus four. Five versus four. Okay, we'll cover skulls and minus twos. Okay, that's a minus one right now because we're down to one monster in play, so that is a successful scratch. So there it is. Okay. So that ends our ends our turns. Okay, so we're gonna do enemy phase, nothing happens. He refreshes. Then we go cards, resources, then new hand. In a resource. Okay. Alright, new turn. We cycle the agenda again because we've taken care of the flame and now we'll get encounter cards. Alright, you must either move each cultist enemy one location toward the white church or draw another cloaked figures. Okay, well we can't cancel it so we're just gonna grab another cloaked figures and stick them. We'll just have them engaged with Patrice. Okay, this one. Move all cultist enemies one inch, one location toward the white church. Any investigators engaged with cultist enemies move with them. 
That's weird because they're like not connected. So I guess this doesn't work because we can't move there because they're not connected. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Okay, so I guess we'll just nothing happens there. They can't move there, but yet there's still uh, um, cultists are still in play. Okay, so here we go. We'll have Jenny do the blasting. Yeah, Jenny might be able to finish this guy off right now. He's got four health left. Yeah. Okay. First action blast. Three, four, five, six. We'll go to eight versus four. Success. Draw a card with overpower. And do two damage. Okay, he has two health left. All right, there's no victory points for that. No victory points for taking him out. So second action, blast. Okay. We are at three, four, five, six versus four. Let's go to seven, eight versus four with unexpected courage. Success, okay. So we defeat this guy. goes to the victory display. Okay, so we still have an enemy left at the decision grotto. grotto. That's this guy. So we'll blast that guy. So we're going to be at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 versus 2. Success. So we blast it for 3 damage, thanks to the old man. Alright. That was her turn. Now we're going to have Patrice. We're going to let the cat finish everything. All right, cat, you can do it. All right, so we're at five against two. We'll name the minus four with what we call the future. Success. So the cat gets in the final kill to end the scenario. Good job. Good job, Zeal. You're a good girl. Okay, that is dealt with. Okay, now, and now we advance. So there was no way we we're going to search for Izzy. We would have had to dig all the way through and grab... Um, elusive to get up there yeah that would have been silly <laughs> so I guess she's gonna take a mental trauma all right let's advance to festival you springs promise you shove the last of the unspeakable horrors flabby and amorphous shaped into the oily waters of the underground river as you sink to your knees at the unhallowed shore, you feel both dread and peace at having broken from your familial rights. The festival is ended. Resolution 3. Oh man, that was that was a long slog. Okay, that was a lot of bad guys. I think what happened there is we didn't have any like really nasty failures like at, at the key moment when we were um slogging it out. The fact that Patrice was able to do evasions, she had enough skill cards to do evasions, um, even without any shriveling, that was really key. Because that kept the enemies like evaded long enough for Jenny to be able to keep the cycling of ammo. She went through four weapons there, and she was down to two bullets on the twin 45s. So, yeah, she went through two Derringers, an Enchanted Blade, and now twin 45s, all one after the other there. So, wow, that is a lot of bullets, a lot of ammo. Yikes. If we didn't have all that arm if we didn't have our full if we weren't fully armed like that, we might have been trouble been in trouble. Actually we would have been in trouble. So as a result, I think this scenario I feel like it's more it's like balanced for three players. Because a lot of just the amount of actions you need to keep the cultists from uh swarming the hill and just the, the sheer amount of firepower you need at the end in order to deal with all these guys. Like I don't think two's enough. I think you need three players. Yeah, it feels like it just feels like balance for three. I don't know how the hell you would do this solo. <laughs> Alright, so let's check out resolution three. Okay, that's gonna be in here. Oops. Okay, resolution two, resolution three. Here we go. Really tiny text. At the hospital you are told that you were found half frozen in Kingsport Harbor at dawn. They say you must have taken the wrong fork of the hill road the night before and fallen over the cliffs at Orange Point. There is nothing you can say because everything is wrong. 
with the broad window showing a sea of modern roofs and the sound of trolleys and motors in the streets below. They insist that this is Kingsport, and you cannot deny it. They murmur about a they mur they murmur about a psychosis, and you agree you had better get any harassing obsessions off your mind. It is not until you are home, far away from the Eastern Sea, that you again feel safe. You are able to obtain a carefully sheltered copy of Al Hazred's Necronomicon from the Library of Miskatonic University. One passage you read is not new to you. You can hear the words echoed in sunless caverns, and you feel remorse for what you remember. You leave the book and go to attend the lighting of the tree in town. There are carolers and laughter, foil-wrapped presents, and warmed punch with old friends, but even in this festive mirth your mind returns one last time to the accursed passage you read. The nethermost caverns, writes the mad Arab, are not for the fathoming of eyes that see, for their marvels are strange and terrific. Curse the ground where dead thoughts live new and oddly bodied, and evil the mind that is held by no head. Wisely did Ibn Shakshwo say, that happy is the tomb where no wizard hath lain, and happy the town at night whose wizards are all ashes. For it is of old rumor that the soul of the devil bought haste not from his charnel clay, but fats and instructs the very worm that gnaws, till out of corruption horrid life springs, and the dull scavengers of earth wax the dull, the dull scavengers of earth wax crafty to vex it and swell monstrous to plague it. Great holes secretly are digged where earth's pores ought to suffice, and things have learnt to walk that ought to crawl. Whoa, that was uh, pretty epic there. Yeah. Um, so each investigator, we're going to suffer a mental trauma for the violent consequences of our actions. Oh, that means Jenny gets two mental trauma because she couldn't, f she couldn't follow up, find, you know, she couldn't follow up on the lead to uh, find Izzy. Yikes. And then we earn experience equal to the Victor X value of each card in the Victor display, and then two bonus for confronting Patrice's ancestry. So we actually had quite a bit in the Victor display here. One, two, three, four, six. So we get eight experience for that. It's pretty good payoff, but man, Jenny's going to have a lot of trauma there to, uh, a lot of trauma to confront with. All right, do we have any victory points on locations? Nope, didn't think so. So we are good. Okay, so that was um, that was the festival. That was actually a pretty good scenario. Um, I think it needs a little bit of tweaking to um, go down to like two or one players. Because um, the way the structure of the acts work, um, like I think I think it was really interesting. Um, the bit about the cultist going up the hill. I, I mean, I like I really like what the uh, author has going here, where. Um, the cultists spawn at the bottom, you know, normally at the bottom of the hill, and then they walk up the hill, and you have to spend time and actions um, engaging them and then defeating them. So I think uh, maybe some extra tweaks are probably needed to get it down to uh, two players because that was that was pretty rough, and we had to be so fully armed in order to deal with that. I guess unless we were to like bail out and go for, you know, like join in the festival, that'd be weird. Okay. So pretty good scenario, actually. Um, I think some of the wording needs to be cleaned up because there was some like some really a few of these things were really strange. There's some good. I like the encounter cards. Um, they were all pretty good. I didn't see any duds out of any of the encounter cards. I actually really like the use of bobbing lanterns here. That's really cool to like turn some peaceful cultists into hunting cultists. Um, the use of rotting remains is good to like force a kind of force a timer. It means you can't hold out forever against the encounter deck. Um, ancient evils. Everyone loves ancient evils. Okay. So, um, yeah, this is a really good scenario. Um, I highly recommend it. And uh, I highly recommend all of you check out ArkhamCentral.com where this is hosted. Um, you can play it on Tabletop Simulator in the Arkham Horror Super Complete mod by opening up the side missions. Or you can go to ArkhamCentral.com hosted by great old one Nathan Early. Um, where you can find the festival, download it, and have it printed for yourself. So, um, once again, thank you so much for watching, and have a great night.